Welcome back. Moving right along. Super excited. I'm going to demonstrate in this lecture. In fact, we'll begin our first project. And this is going to be a real, real world project where we are actually going to create a blog or a website using Figma. During this creation, you will learn some additional tips and techniques, maybe learn some new tools, right? As I demonstrate this particular project. So I have a new file open. Let me go ahead and select the frame tool and select desktop. This will give me the desktop artboard on my canvas area. All right, so since I'm starting from scratch, a good practice is obviously you should have something on paper, right? So you need to have a well thought out design on paper. You need to know exactly where the menu goes, where the button goes, what kind of images need to be placed and whatnot. So you need to collect all of those thoughts on a piece of paper, design it, create a prototype, and then of course get to Figma and then get to work. So I'm going to leave that as a homework for you. So before you actually practice on this, take a piece of paper, design the actual website or blog that you think will work, right? Or maybe the customer, your customer has sent in a requirement, right? So the customer has sent in a potential design or the idea or the thought. And now it's in your hands to actually make it more creative and innovative at the same time. So with that said, I'm going to jump right in. I'm going to create, let's say, I'm going to place an image first. I'm going to put a logo up here, maybe just some text and some banner ads or whatever. Okay. So the idea is to create a blog. And the objective of this blog is going to be, it's, it's going to be a car blog, a vintage cars or any kind of cars. So we're going to talk about different kinds of cars. Before I do that, let me show you some existing blogs. So I'm going to go to the internet and just kind of show you the Google research blog. Again, notice the design is very simple. Just some section on top here, some text section, and there's a section of search blogs and maybe a couple of links and some social media. That's about it. So the Google blog is, is fairly straightforward. Another one is our Claydesk eDiscovery blog. This is also nice and simple. We have the top section, then of course our image and some text. And on the right side, you'll see some widgets as well. The Microsoft blog has a couple of menu items on top. And then of course, the left section is your text and the right is the widgets area or the more news area. So pretty much it follows the same theme, right? Similarly, Apple has its own newsroom where you can actually take a look at that this particular area has its own menu on top with some text. And then of course, the images on the right and the text on the left. Simplicity is king, by the way. So as a design principle, you need to kind of make sure that you keep in mind the interaction design, right, of, of the user behavior. What will happen when the user actually visits these blogs? So let's go back to our Figma desktop version. And I'm going to go ahead and import and insert an image. So our logo goes in here. Let me see if I can find the right logo. I'm going to select this logo for a blog and I'm going to call this Cladass Car Blog or something like that. Okay. You can give it any name you like. So once I have my image here, notice it has some additional text too, right? So I would only like to actually see this part, the actual image. So not the learning on demand and whatnot. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to crop images. So make sure your image is selected. And then to crop image, I just need to go to the fill option, fit, crop, or tile. So I'm going to choose crop. And notice it places these placeholders. And I can simply crop the image to my desired size. There we go. So fairly straightforward. Another thing I want to show you that I'll probably show you when I actually get to this main image. Okay. But for right now, here's our simple image. I'm going to place some text and this text is going to be, let's say just types of cars, vintage, make this bigger or let's say 36 is good. And once I have one of them, remember I can create a component off of this and copy it. So if I change text on one of the text is going to change for all of the boxes. Okay. So let me in fact make it a little bit more smaller here since they're 36. I'm going to use 24. There we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a 
component, right? Go to create component. And once it is created, I'm going to hold the alt key down and just copy it and then copy it again. And maybe do another one. Okay. So I'm going to have four of these. And then of course, I'm going to highlight all of them and create a group. And we talked about groups, right? So it's easier for you to actually work with them. So I'm going to right click and then I'm going to choose group selection. You can do control G as well. So that way I've grouped all of these. So if I need to change the text, maybe I could. So instead of vintage, I'm going to call this classic and I'm going to change the text here as well. And this is going to be modern cars and this is going to be old cars. Just some random text here. Okay. So here's my vintage. Here's my classic. Here's the modern and here's the old. On the right side of the screen, I'm maybe going to add maybe a newsletter or a search area or a menu item, something like that. Okay. So let's go ahead and create those. Maybe I'll just add some social media here that looks good on top. So let's find our icons here. Another shortcut here is that you can select multiple icons using the control key on the keyboard. So for instance, I'm going to select the Facebook icon, hold the control key down, select the Insta, and then the Twitter and YouTube, all four of them open and notice Figma understands that there are four icons or images that need to be placed on the artboard. So I'm going to go ahead and place them one by one, two, three, and four. So four clicks, it places the images accordingly. I can separate these images, make them smaller. And of course, if I need to maintain the proportion, remember, I need to hold the shift key down. So this is my first, and this is going to be my second image and my third image and there's going to be one more of course my fourth image so this is we need to be for the same size right so i need to make sure that they all remain the same size so let's say i want to keep 60 by 60 right so i need to make sure that this also of the same size and of course the same size for the facebook icon as well okay perfect Let's align them together and make it bigger so we can actually see. It's easier for you to see as well. So I have a margin of 11, 11, and then 11. Perfect. Highlight them all. Make sure you group them. Working with groups is simpler because remember when we talked earlier in one of the earlier lectures, you may have hundreds and hundreds of these layers and things can get easily out of hands. So it's always better to group them. So group two is my social icons. And then this group right here, I'm going to call this top text. So our design is looking good. Scroll down. Next, I'm going to add some image, some banner image here, a large image, place image. And I'm going to choose one of the vintage cars here. Let's see if I can find one. Okay. That's the hard part. There we go. I'm going to choose this one. So simply select this, click open, and you should be able to place this image right on the artboard. And of course, it's a large image, right? So I can make it smaller or let me first make it smaller. So let's say a thousand by a thousand and I'm going to put zero so it fits into the artboard. Perfect. So I'm going to work with this image, make it a little nicer, maybe place right here. So everything is aligned to the last icon, right? And of course, the easiest way is for me to turn on the grid. So before I work further with this image, I'm going to navigate to my actual frame and bring up a grid. And this is just for you guys. So you can actually see when you're starting off. But once you get experience, you would understand where to place the objects. So our columns are going to be, I'm going to work on a 12 column with a gutter of 20. And the same thing, 12 rows with a gutter of 20. Okay. So you can actually see the layout. Let me make this a little lighter. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So now it's easier for us to work with, right? So I'm going to choose, let me bring up the column grids here. So let me move this group here and snap to the grid. Same thing with our image here. Now I can customize this image right in Figma. So I don't have to go back to Photoshop or some other tool to customize the image. I can pretty much do 
a lot of things. It's a pretty powerful features in Figma. So I'm going to bring up my image here. And of course, I can work with exposure, contrast, saturation. But what if I want to blur this image or let's say uh, make it lighter, right? So it doesn't show up as crisp as it looks now. So in order to do that, I need to work with layers. So right now, the layer is passed through. So in order for me to blur the image or lighten the image, I'm going to use the multiply layer. And instead of 100%, I'm going to say 50%. And notice it lightens up the image. And that's exactly what I need. And I'm going to make this image a little larger here because I'm going to place some text on the left. Same thing, I'm going to snap the logo to the grid. There we go. All right, perfect.